Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a book review and well if you've noticed that I usually upload on Thursdays you'll also have noticed that this video is indeed late because today is a Sunday. That's because I had a really busy week and I didn't really know what kind of video to film. So here I am on a Sunday bringing you a book review of Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I actually read this probably two weeks ago now and it's for my children's literature class. I intend to do a collective review of several of the titles that we are required to read for the module but I love this book a lot so I thought I'd talk about it individually. So I think Howl's Moving Castle is the first in a trilogy but the sequels to Howl's Moving Castle weren't released until relatively recently so I think within the last 15 years. Don't quote me on that though because I'm not 100% sure that that is actually true but I think it is. I think that's what I read. But I've only read Howl's Moving Castle and Howl's Moving Castle is about Sophie and her siblings. Sophie and her two sisters live in Market Chipping which is a very small town and unfortunately that dad has died. Now Sophie's stepmom who is her one her youngest sister, actual mum, has inherited the hat making shop and because she can't afford to pay for all the girls' education anymore, she decides to send one of the girls off to learn magic from a witch. I'm not sure whether she's actually called a witch, but from a woman who practices magic. And the other one is sent to be an apprentice at a baker's and then Sophie is the eldest and she's very good at decorating hats and she is required to stay with her stepmom in the hat shop. And at first she doesn't mind, Sophie has this mentality which is mentioned like at the very first page of the book and it is, it is quite a misfortune to be born the eldest of three. Everyone knows you are the one who will feel first and worst if the three of you seek, set out to seek your fortunes. So Sophie remains at the hat shop, she's pretty content with being there, she likes decorating the hats. But then one day the Witch of the Waste walks into her shop and she puts the curse on Sophie. Sophie, who's absolutely horrified, runs away and not knowing where to go, she ends up in Howl's Moving Castle. It's a castle that moves around her town and everyone is afraid of the wizard who lives there. Now I really, really really enjoyed this book. I'm... I didn't really know what to expect when I started reading it but I absolutely loved it. The characters are lovely and there's just a great dynamic between Sophie and Howl and then also the boy who's Howl's apprentice and it's so cute and Howl is such... well he can be a bit annoying but he's also very sweet and not at all what you'd expect from a book titled Howl's Moving Castle and where at the beginning it is constantly reiterated that he is evil and eats girls' hearts <laughs> and that sort of stuff. Throughout the novel there's also is an air of mystery because Sophie starts to learn things about herself that no one understands, herself included, and then there's something going on with her sisters which is complicated there's more to the world than she thought there was and than I thought there was. <laughs> there, w there were a few times that I actually had to laugh at this book and one of them wasn't really at the situation but more, more a word choice um, so that might be like the literature student in me popping up uh, but at one point Diana Wynne Jones calls a window unexpected because there's a window that Sophie hadn't seen the night before and then she sees it and then she calls it the, an unexpected window. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious <laughs> because who would think to call a window unexpected in that sense? Who would use that adjective to describe a window? I thought that was amazing <laughs> and hilarious. So yeah, I absolutely adored this book. It's got a great cast of characters, great dynamics between the characters, and there's some mystery, but it's also a very quick read, and it is on my children's literature module, and I think 
I can definitely see why children would absolutely love this. I would have loved this if I had read it when I was younger. I mean, I still really like it. I wouldn't really know what age to put on this. Maybe like 12? So yeah, I would really recommend it to people who are interested, interested in books from that age category. And I will, I will probably also uh, read the sequels at some point, although I do think they're about different characters, sadly enough, because I would have liked to see more of Hal. Um, but yes, those are my thoughts on Hal's Moving Castle. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of the book if you've read it, or if you've seen the film, um, what you thought of it, possibly in comparison to the book, or just on its own, that's fine too. Because I would love to hear about that. Uh, yes, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!